Hi everyone, this is YML and welcome to the third part in the object detection series. In this video, we are going to take a look at the faster RCNN model, which brings a significant speed improvement to the fast RCNN model that we studied in the previous part. If you haven't already, please watch the first part and the second part in the series, because we are going to build on top of that information. To quickly recap, the original SCNN worked by extracting the features from each proposed region individually using a CNN model and classifying each one using an SVM, which made the overall object detection quite slow. The fast RCNN model improves this mechanism and speeds up the computation by extracting the features only once, mapping the proposed regions in the feature map, and then using a region of interest pooling layer to create a fixed length vector that is used for classification and bounding box regression. However, the fast RCNN model still had a major drawback. The region proposal algorithm, which is still quite slow for most of the real world applications, while also being an external general algorithm that is not fine tuned for the object detection problem that we are trying to solve. The faster RCNN model mitigates this limitation by introducing the region proposal network, which, as the name suggests, replaces the region proposal algorithm in RCNN and fast RCNN with a significant faster neural network that can learn to generate better regions for the task at hand. The region proposal network starts by generating anchor points that are placed at regular intervals over the image and act as a prior to predict object proposals. Then, for each anchor point, we have k predefined boxes of different sizes and aspect ratios that are used to generate region proposal that may or may not contain objects of interest. Here, I've depicted only four such boxes, but in a typical faster RCNN implementation, there are k equal to 9 anchor boxes of three different scales and three different aspect ratios. To compute the anchor boxes, what we do is to apply some convolutional layers in a smart way. The first one has 512 channels, the same as the feature map channels for the model used in the paper, and the 3x3 channel, which acts as an intermediate layer. Then we apply two convolutional layers with a 1x1 kernel, one that predicts whether the box contains an object or not, and the other one which predicts a more fine-tuned bounding box compared to our prior assumption. The classifier contains two key scores for each anchor corresponding to the two classes we are using, object and background, and the bounding box regression contains 4k scores, one for each corner of the box. If we were to dissect this even further, we would see that the outputs of the region proposal network are actually two 3D volumes with the height and the weight being equal to the height and the weight of the feature map, and with the depth of the first volume being equal to 2k and of the second volume with 4k. So, if we were to take for instance this anchor point here, we could predict for the first anchor box that it contains an object. So, we would have to predict a 1 on the object label and a 0 on the background label for the first two depth values of the first volume, while for the first four depth values of the second volume, the bounding box regressor, we'd have to predict the coordinates of the bounding box. On the other hand, if we didn't have an anchor box that corresponded to an actual object, we'd have to predict 0 for the object label and 1 for the background label. And for the corresponding box coordinates, it doesn't matter what we predict, since we don't consider those values during training. I would like to clarify one last thing before the end of this video regarding the way we select which anchor box to use as representative for the ground truth bounding box of an object or background during training. To do that, we compute the intersection over union between each anchor box and the target object bounding box by calculating the area of their intersection and dividing this number by the area of their union. Then, we follow four rules to select the positive anchor boxes and the negative anchor boxes. 1. We mark as positive all the anchor boxes that obtain an intersection over union overlap of over 0.7 with a ground truth bounding box. 2. We mark as negatives all the anchor boxes that obtain an intersection over union overlap lower than 0.3 with all the ground truth objects. 3. If for a ground truth object bounding box, no anchor box obtain an intersection over union overlap higher than 0.7, then we select as positive the anchor box with the highest overlap 
if that intersection over union score is higher than 0.5. And finally, the fourth rule, all the anchor boxes that were not marked as either positive or negative do not contribute to the training. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for more content like this. If you have any question or feedback about the topic I covered in this video, please leave them down in the comments below. See you!